is called Karen. People are Karens, you know. Um, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. But uh, you don't know what that is. Well, a Karen would be somebody that would uh, get all over you because you're walking the wrong way in public. If the arrow says to go this way, and you go the wrong way, and they would follow you and tape you and tell everybody in the store to go get the manager and tell them what a jerk you are. That's basically a Karen. And I feel bad for the women named Karen. Where that ever came from? Um, let us turn to Romans chapter 14. This isn't a deep theological sermon today. Um, this should be pretty easy, low-hanging fruit. Okay? Everybody in Romans 14? Let's start in uh, verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live... We live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For, this, for to this end Christ both died and rose and received that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. Is this true? Amen. Amen. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For shall, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Is that true? Yeah. Can you drive more than one car at a time? <laughs> then whether the guy next to you is driving like a jerk or not, it's really none of your business. You know, unless you want to try to be a Karen and follow this person and do everything you can do, which is going to end not so well. I think we do real well to drive our own cars and pray for the individual that's not doing the way he ought to be doing or she ought to be doing. You know, let let God deal with revenge. Amen. It's not a Christian thing to be revengeful. Right? If that's a word, I hope that it is. Cause, right. um, I, I did make a comment last Sabbath, and I hope this doesn't take isn't taken the wrong way. I think people ought to be in church more loving and kind and forgiving, like some people are in a bar. You know, you get people in church. And they get upset with somebody because they're sitting in what they think is their seat. And it's not the way we should be. We should love one another, right? Yeah. How, how do we look different than the rest of the world? I, I would love, if maybe we could have the mic. Could you handle the mic? Um, like I said, this isn't going to be your normal... I, I would like some discussion on this. So, how is it... And if you just raise your hand, Miss Patty, and bring you the mic, that we cannot look like the world. Any ideas on how the Christian church, God is calling to be called out separate from the world, can look different from the world? And you're more than welcome to use scripture. Anybody? How is it that we're called to be different? How do we look different? What? Go ahead, Miss Mary Jane. Well, I would think one of the things that is different because we love one another. Jesus tells us to love one another, and that's the big difference. If you can love everyone else, you really don't have to worry about the Ten Commandments because. God is love, and if we show that, but any time we show division or hatred or we're angry with somebody, uh, we're not being a good witness for Christ. Amen. So she used scripture. The Bible does say, how should you know 
my people by their love one to another. That was fantastic. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? You know, the Bible also talks about how, you know, if you don't take care of your own, right, you're worse than an infidel, right? So what does that mean? I mean, it may be easy to love people that love you, but how about loving the unlovable? Richard wants to speak. Loving the unlovable. Isn't that really the test of Christian character? Yes, Richard. Christ talked about at the end of time, he's going to separate people and the sheep and goats. And they asked, well, what did we do different? And they helped people, they visited people in the prisons, and gave people food and clothes. Uh, a number of the ministries of the church that uh, does. Amen. Absolutely. And think about that, what Richard just said. Marty, we'll go ahead. We'll just, I'll let, and then I'll come. You're good. You don't need to run, girl. <laughs> don't touch the mic. I'll get yours. <laughs> a simple thing like opening the door for somebody when you go to a store or go to a place if it's not an automatic door. And just because they happen to have tattoos on their face and earrings hanging down to their knees and purple hair doesn't mean that you don't have to open or shouldn't open the door for them, even though you probably would for somebody that looks just like you. Mm. Very good, very good thought. You know, and even then, um, those people that you speak of that are tattooed up and pierced up, I found they're very nice people. You can talk to them very well. I have a neighbor that just moved in right next to me. He's tattooed all up and he's got earrings on both sides. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. I'm just looking at Mark chapter 4 and verse um, 30, verse 40. It's when um, the disciples were out in the great storm mm -hmm. and uh, Jesus was asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and they said, Teacher, you don't, do we not care that we are perishing? And some of us are perishing, um, uh, you know, all this stuff. We, we know some people that have passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Mm. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him. Mm -hmm. So as Christians, we have our uh, social media where we can you know, express our opinions, but we need to have in our dealings with others, not this hysterical hysteria, this fear, fear of who's going to be elected, fear of am Correct. I going to get uh, COVID, fear, fearfulness is contagious. Yes. And we need to be the calming spirit uh, and have verses that, like this one that Jesus wants us to have faith, mm -hmm. to continue to believe that he's the one that's in control and, uh, and, and let him be in control of me or yes. you. Yeah. Yes. I'd like to say that fear is even infectious. You know, it is. It, it just, we don't need to be that way. And I think as Christians, these are great points, and I, I'm wanting to bring all this out so we can think from different points of view, because that's what the body of Christ is. We're different minds. We come from different points of view. We have different life experiences. And if we don't share that as a group, how can we grow? We're supposed to be called as one. You see, what the mighty thing is that ends this whole argument and, and vilifies the devil, who is the enemy of God, and vindicates the Lord Jesus Christ is his, his people. His people all coming together as one. Moving as one man. Do you see that? I mean, the only thing we have here to see that in, is, is an army marching. Which is a beautiful thing. I, I'm sure you guys have seen that and looked at it and thought, wow. Look at the mechanics of it. But then you see a man giving the marching orders. 
and it's beautiful. What God is trying to do is bring his church together of all these different people moving as one man. When he has that, it's game over, brothers and sisters. We're going home. Jesus is going to stand up, and it's done. But we shouldn't be doing anything politically on Facebook. Because it hurts our witness with our brothers and sisters. You know, it doesn't matter if you lean right, you lean left, whatever. Uh, when we put that kind of stuff on, it hurts our witness, period. It just does. And uh, the other thing I want to bring out that Richard brought up, and Richard wants to speak again, that he said, these are the things that we've done, right? Well, there was two groups, right? There was, there was the sheep and there was the goats. The goats said, well, we did this and we did that. And we did the other thing in your name, right? But what does God say to them? I never knew you. But what does, what does God say to the sheep? He says, well, you did everything that the goats said that they did, right? And what does the sheep say? Well, when did we do that? You see this? Why did they say that? Because they were so focused upon the shepherd, they were not in focused at all on what they themselves. The self was lost in the work of Christ. They were so focused on Jesus that they emulated him. They had no idea. That's where the real rubber meets the road. I'll expand what. Deborah said, this is why it says about that text, if the disciples had trusted in Jesus, they would have kept in peace. Mm -hmm. Their fear in the time of danger revealed their unbelief. In their efforts to save themselves, they forgot Jesus, and it was only when in desperation of self, in only despair of self-dependence, they turned to him that he, could, that he could give them help. I think part of the problem is, as you said, we're afraid, and we try desperately in our own ways to figure this stuff out, and Jesus can't help us. And when we finally feel that like we're, uh, we just don't have anything left. The disciples were good sails, sail, sailing men. I mean, they knew how to take care of their boat. Yes. And that, and it only when they realized that they couldn't do anything, that they said, Jesus can save us. And so maybe he's waiting, like you said, for us to say, Jesus coming and say this. Absolutely. You know, and I'm a very visually driven person, so the whole time you were speaking, I see a guy drowning. And he can't be saved until he gives up. Because if I'm a great swimmer, and I go to try to save this guy, he's going to drown both of us. So when he's done, when he's done struggling, and he's just given up, and he's ready to now drown, now I can come in and save him. And that's really the, that's really the picture. Jesus needs us to come to that position where we realize that we're helpless and hopeless. And that's exactly who we are. Because you, can, you, cannot, you cannot fix this heart. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. And it, it, it can't be fixed. It has to be crucified. Mm. Brother. Uh, one of the verses my wife and I were talking about recently has to do with uh, a spring cannot give forth both fresh water salt water at the same time and these verses here in James 3 are talking about um, blessings and curses and one of the things that I think we can do to separate ourselves from the world is work on our speech because that's how people hear us and that's how people you know interact with us and see us mm -hmm. and if you are cursing and blessing it says here that you, you just shouldn't do that in uh, the King James Version out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. And that's a good way we can distinguish ourselves. Amen. Amen. I agree. And some of us that are type A personalities like myself, we have to be careful because some people are put off by somebody who's forward and, you know, pretty confident. And that you have to tone it down sometimes for some people. So every, every personality has, has its quirks, you know, has its strengths and its weaknesses. We need to take all these things into consideration. A good tree does what? There's good fruit. That's what we need to focus on, Christ, and you become a good tree. Kyla? 
the way I was talking about clowning, um, when, uh, Corey, my brother, was in uh, Texas, um, for work, we had his animals for a month, and, uh, one of his dogs, um, Zena, she's a, uh, uh, a pit bull, and she's big. Um, but anyway, she had fallen in a pool, and raised up to Holland, <laughs> swim, Zena, swim, Zena, swim, Zena, swim. <laughs> and he got her, and she, uh, swam to the, um, the edge of the of a pool, and he was able to grab, um, her collar and uh, pull her out. But, <laughs> but, um, when, um, uh, And if he hadn't have done that, I don't know if she would have been able to pull herself out because she was at the very, at the um, six um, foot end. So I don't know if she would have been able to swim to the other end by herself gotten out. Amen. Well, we're glad she made it. Amen. All right, so back to Romans 14. Has anybody else got anything they want to add? Miss Deborah? Go ahead. No, this is fine. Absolutely. Just one more. Sure. Uh, with these um, masks on, it's hard to smile at people in uh, the stores. It is. But it's interesting that the eyes tell the smile. Yes. And you can tell. And so I've noticed that there's a whole lot of, it's a shutdown uh, socially. And a lot of people, we're just, you know, walking past each other. We don't talk to each other and such. But in the Bible, and we brought this out in another Sabbath school a while back, but Matthew 5, verse 47, mm. Jesus said, um, well, in 46, it says, For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Then he says, Do not even a tax collector do the same. But then 47, it says, And if you greet your brethren only, in other words, only folks that you know, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. In other words, if we want to be the way Jesus wants us to be, we're going to be talking to people we don't know, not just the people we do know. And I find that in the store is a good time to do to practice that. It lightens up the whole atmosphere. Absolutely. And so instead of, I think people can tell we're, we might like demonstrate the love of Christ if, even though we are going to stores with masks on for we don't know how long, we initiate contact. We say the things we would have said before. Right. Be the kindness that we want to receive. <laughs> yep, I agree. And the smiling in your eyes does tell a lot. I mean, you can't, I mean, you don't, you can hide the face, but you can't hide the eyes. Ms. Sherry, you had something? Oh. Anybody else? Oh, okay, sure. I read one time that Mother Teresa said she viewed it as her calling to serve Christ in his most distressing disguise as the poor mm. and the unwashed. And I think when I see a person in a city, sitting on the street, asking for money, I'm not going to just walk by, even though my kids say, Mom, it's a scam. Say, how much would it take for you to sit out there and do that? I wouldn't do it. Not, not if I made a thousand dollars a day. I think that Christ wants us to touch the poor, the unwashed, the 
and lovable, to look beyond their appearance and realize that they're one of his children as well. Yeah. Obviously the Lord did it, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have Marvin and Priscilla in my life now. Okay. And Marvin was over last night, needs $20 for I don't know what, but I had nothing in my little change purse, like 65 cents. He says, that's okay. I said, Marvin, come back tomorrow. I'll get you some money. But um, he used to trim the trees here, he said. He used to trim the trees here. And um, I, I just feel the same way that you feel. Like, I could say, and I've thought, I've struggled with it, the people who are asking for money. And what, you know, what, is it a scam? You know, what are they going to do? Are they going to buy alcohol? I can smell it on his breath. You know, what about cigarettes? You know, I don't, you know, but that's not the point. And I, I, I've prayed about it and prayed about it. And the point is, to me, is the way I see it, is number one, what would Jesus do? You know, mm -hmm. this is my brother. This is my brother and my sister. It's not my place to judge them. Yep. And if if they're in my life for a re they're in my life for a reason, and the people that I run into every day. Wherever I am, they're there for a reason. For me, maybe I've got to grow because I know that. And um, but I, I do want to be in that that you know line where Jesus says, "Okay, okay, the trees, you can come in. You know, you, you reached out for me, and um, that's what I want for me." And uh, I want to be able to invite Marvin and Priscilla to my church. Right. And I want, you know, Gil and them and, to be accepted. And have them be accepted. Yes, I get it. Whether they will or not, I don't know. I, right. But I would love to be able to do that. And, right. um, but yeah, I've, we're here for a reason. We're all beggars. We're all, we're all yeah, but we we're need to beggars. reach out and treat these people like Jesus treated, treated treats us. You know. you know, I think of Will Rogers. Will Rogers once said, he says, I'd rather be the poor soul that, that bought the Brooklyn Bridge than oh. the fellow that sold it. Oh. <laughs> you know, I think that tells a lot. Anybody else? All right, let's move on then. Thank you so much, Pat. Appreciate everybody's uh, input. And these are good things. And this, is, this doesn't obviously exhaust the thought process of... We want one more? We got one more here. Bobby wants to speak. I don't want to cut anybody off. If somebody else wants, I can trim this thing down. It's no problem. Uh, where we, before we lived, before we moved to New Smyrna, it was about three hours south, a little town of Cold Sound. And uh, there's a Bible college there, and they've been there probably 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this really, well, there's a, you, when you see these people walking to the beach, you can tell right away they're from the Bible College. Now this necessarily isn't the way we want to do it because I always rationalize it. It's the way they dress. Okay. Now, especially well, if they're going to wear women. I mean, the men are a little hard, but the women are wearing uh, dresses that are halfway between the knee and the, and the ground. So, and they're usually uh, like denim or something like that. But I think what we're zeroing in on here, it's not how we dress, it's how we act, right. how we portray. But it can Jesus be how you dress. dress. Well, we should dress modestly, <laughs> yeah. you know, we shouldn't be out there, yeah. well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say that isn't, you know, and I, when I see him, I think, oh, wow, those are the Bible college people. And then I think, okay, I wonder if, how they, uh, I wonder if people would know that if they weren't dressed that way. Just a thought. Yep. Yeah. Good thought. Good thought. Anybody else? I was falling. Okay. I guess that's it then.
Who, who here was here during the fires in Florida? <clears throat> okay, not too many of you. Know, and I don't believe it was as bad as what's going on in California, but it was pretty bad. I wasn't here, but my wife has told me about it. All right, let's go back to Romans 14. And we'll begin in our verse for today. But what, why dost thou judge thy brother, and why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And when do we stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Yes. So during this time while we're alive? When Jesus comes, what does he say? His reward is with him. He says it is finished. Correct? So the, the judgment is going on now. As we speak. Because when he comes, it's done. Period. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us therefore judge, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to falling in his brother's way. Is that a good, good way to be? That's a good thought process, isn't it? That's acting like a true Christian. Who is the judge? Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus is the judge? Who's the accuser? Satan. Satan. What, what is going on in the world today? Aren't, it, it, isn't it being taught for everybody to uh, rat their neighbor out? Watch this and talk about that. And, you know. Who are they asking you to act like? <laughs> like Satan. This isn't the way to be, brothers and sisters. When I was a little kid, um, we learned real quick. Because Dad would blister us. If you know, if you told on, if I say I told on my sister. If she did something wrong, well, she'd get in trouble. But I got the same trouble she got. Well, it didn't take me long to learn that ratting people out was not the way to go. Because, <laughs> you know, therefore you can't bribe anybody either, you know, under that circumstance. Let us move on. Let us go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians and chapter 3. Y'all there? Yeah. I'll begin in verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. What is liberty, brothers and sisters? What is liberty? Freedom. freedom. What does freedom mean? Freedom from the law. It means freedom, right? So, even if that's something that you disagree with, that somebody may be doing, that's freedom, right? I want to stand here and say that I fight for people's rights that I disagree with. Okay? I want to stand for people's rights that I disagree with because I believe in freedom. And that's what freedom means. Liberty is why people came to this country. In its very inception, liberty was the whole thought process of the Constitution. 
Was it not? If I'm wrong, please tell me. And what, what does this verse say? It says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there